Saturday morning, January 4th. I'm walking into uh, Lakeview Fitness, it's my local gym. Me and my business partner, Jeff, who will be part of the e-bike team this year after completing a big goal that he had for 2019, which was to ride uh, the equivalent of 3,000 miles in a, a single year. He achieved it. He was looking for a new goal. He's the co-owner of Impact Media, which is the title sponsor of the team. So I said, dude, why don't you just join on board and uh, be part of this e-bike team? He obliged, he's excited, we're training. It's not easy to run a company, build a team and find time to train, but make it a priority. So we're gonna go and get this training session in. My name's Colin Bierman. I'm racing in the Masters class for the Specialized GNCC EMTB uh, series. So when I was a kid, probably 11 or 12 years old, um, I met Colin at Wamsley Cycles. BMX started to become uh, the scene in you know West Virginia, greater Pittsburgh area. And I started to go to the bike shop to learn about BMX bikes. And, and that's where I got my bikes. And I grew a friendship with Colin. And, and over the years, I mean, he's been pretty much my number one riding partner. And, um, you know, even though I'm, you know, in my early 30s and he's he's in his 50s. I mean, he's, he's one of my really, really close friends. So ultimately when I, I saw him last year, I was heading to a BMX race and he's heading to this e-bike thing. And he was telling me a little about it. And then, you know, we came back and he had won that weekend. And he kind of kept talking about the e-bike thing, talking about the e-bike thing. And, you know, he knows what I like as far as riding. He's ridden with me all these years. I was like, well, I'll give it a shot. So he took me out on a ride and I was, I was immediately hooked. Um, I got an e-bike and then I went to three or four of the races last year with him. So he was a big part of why we put together this team. He won a national championship last year. He knows a lot about the sport. He knows a lot about GNCC and the culture. So I came to him with this crazy idea of, hey, what do you think about putting this team together? And he was like, I think it would be cool. So then I went and pulled all the strings and pulled it off. But I went back to Colin and was like, hey, I want you to be on the team. I want you to, you know, not just be one and done. I want you to try to defend your championship and be one of the, the, the leaders of the team uh, in, in the master's class. And that's exactly what he what he did. I would say career wise, I man, started lifetime rider, you know, from when I was a kid with my parents. As a teenager, got my first road bike and had the ability to be able to just go explore. When I moved to Morgantown in 1986, through needing service, went to Walmsley Cycles and met up with those guys, became friends with them, uh, started riding with them, and then really just kind of by hanging out, um, started working for them one summer as a summer job and uh, never left. So started um, originally racing mountain bikes with the guys at the shop and then um, had the opportunity to do some you know, road racing because we were training on the road for fitness for uh, the mountain bike races. Everything from uh, time trials, criterium races, uh, full on road races, stage races. You know, got into that for a few years, was doing some downhill racing, and when Specialized first came out with their first uh, Levo, yeah, it changed everything. It was all the fun. And, um, you know, still a lot of the fitness, but none of the suffering. And then when the racing scene started, I jumped right on board, traveled to all the races last year to uh, compete in those. You know, had success at the beginning, uh, won the first race, and then I was like, well, I should try the second race, and I won that. And then I was in, and then um, got to Loretta Lynn's, and uh, yeah, a, a fellow from North Carolina showed up, um, Barry Ray, and yeah, I mean, he was fit. So that was another race where I went all out the whole time, but I ended up second, and that gave me some motivation to, you know, put it down at the next races. And then after that, that was the only race that I lost last year. You know, I had won a national championship GNCC on a dirt bike, but this was this was more like 
more important to me because it was more my thing. The bicycle was me. And then to get recognized through the GNCC with a national championship was, uh, it was something super special. My goal is to win another national championship for sure. Um, per race, it's go as hard as I can, get the best result. I think as a racer, um, I know there's always faster people. And, and I understand that, but I, I, yeah, I wanna win. Um, I wanna go to every race. And when I go to that race, I know that I can fight for the win. And um, yeah, that's my, my goal is to win that national championship, but it's also do as best as I can, um, representing the team now, take it one race at a time and go hard. So it's still cold out uh, in you know North Central West Virginia, but it's 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 bearable now to where the trails have dried up enough, um, the parks are open back up again as far as being uh, a good spot to ride. So the bad part is we're running out of time before the first race. So we're doing whatever we can do and getting in any type of riding that we can get in. So the first ride of the season comes along and. Um, Everybody's excited and, and we got guys that aren't even on the team coming out to ride with us just because of that, that community of, uh, of cyclists, they're just ready to hit the trails. The problem with riding early in the season is there's a lot of stuff that have fallen out of the trees that are on the trails that haven't been blown off yet. And I think we had that harsh reality um, you know, on our first ride, what was supposed to be a solid you know, two, three hour day of, of riding and just team bonding, kind of turned into carnage and, and messed our, our day up and kind of ended everything uh, short. Something flew up and smashed this thing, dude. It's clicking. I mean, it hit it so hard that the, uh, the it pushed it back and locked it out. So the problem is all the stuff that's just flying up off the trail is getting into our drivetrains or what we call a derailleur. And in some cases for a few of the guys, it literally ripped them off, right? If you get the smallest of a twig, um, if it gets sucked up in that derailleur, it can wrap everything up and then it twists the metal and it's, it's meant to break off so that you don't further damage your bike. So unfortunately about an hour in, not, well not even, uh, that happened to Colin. And then, you know, um, something flew up and, and, and blew several teeth off my jockey wheel, uh, which keeps the, the chain on the derailleur. Jeff had a malfunction. And then kind of to top it off, you know, Colin had already called it a day, he left. And we're like, well, we'll keep riding. You know, we're, we're, our bikes are salvageable. And then not 15, 20 minutes later, Adam, we're four miles back in and he rips his derailleur off. So it's kind of like, whether it's a sign from God or whatever you want to say, it's like, hey, it's time to call it a day. Um, it was just enough for everybody to get excited about the season, but definitely a bummer that we weren't able to get more in and a little bit of a stressor because I think everybody was hoping to shake their legs out leading into the race. Um, and it was kind of a, a wasted opportunity. Even though we had uh, bad luck today, good ride, man. I'm excited for this year. It's gonna be fun hanging out with everybody. Jeffrey, what'd you think? The maiden, the real maiden voyage. You survived it. I mean, your bike, um, Pretty much did. Yeah. So our XC1 rider or our pro class rider, Nathan Meisner, super fast kid, great kid, awesome family, somebody we're excited to have on the team. Um, he's only 18 years old, so he's, you know, he's fresh out of high school, he's in his first year of college, he's got a lot of stuff going on, and he's never ridden an e-bike, well he's ridden an e-bike, but he doesn't own one. And he, we're in that process of getting his e-bike from Specialized. And just the complications of getting that were uh, cutting it really close to having it by the first race. Obviously, Nathan doesn't want to show up to the first race and then not have any time on the bike. Uh, and we don't want Nathan to not have his bike for the first race. We've put all this time and energy into building this team. We want our pro, our premier class rider to be on that 20, uh, 2020 Specialized Turbo Levo not an older model bike. Uh, it needs to be what it needs to be. So, you know, he had been trying, uh, I had been trying, Colin had been trying, and just things weren't coming together. And I wasn't sure that he was gonna have his bike, so it was creating a lot of stress. Hey man, what's going on? Hey, I, um, I still don't have an update on uh, Nathan's bike. Uh, our XC1 Pro Rider, we are two weeks out from uh, 
from the first race. And man, we just don't have a bike. If he doesn't show up to round one, he doesn't qualify. The pros have to race all eight races to qualify. So he did offer to um, utilize his dad's bike to, to at least show up to round one and get points in, which is, is great and, and it's gracious of his dad to offer that. The problem is his dad has a 2018 Kinevo. So it's an older model um, enduro style bike. Um, I mean, listen, dude, I put, I put a ton of work in, a ton of money in, and I didn't do all this for the kickoff of this e-bike team to be the first one in the country to show up and our pro rider be on a 2018 um, enduro downhill style bike. So I don't, yeah, I don't know what to do. Um, we're running out of time. So we need to get this figured out. So yeah, as you just heard, um, our pro doesn't have a bike yet. Um, and we gotta get that figured out because I mean, it is February 28th and we're going racing on March 14th. So not only do I need them to have a bike, I need them to be able to get some time on that bike. Like we got seat time last weekend, which is why the Levo is behind me. I'm getting some seat time this weekend and our pro has not, has not been on his bike. Um, so we're putting him at a disadvantage if he doesn't have his ride. So frustrating, um, worrisome, whatever, we just gotta figure it out. It is um, Sunday, March 8th. We're officially less than a week out from um, from the first race of the season. We're getting ready to go do a, uh, a group ride, the final group ride. The majority of our team uh, is gonna be out today, minus Jeff, um, getting 60 helmet, ready to ride. Um, today's a important day because our pro, Nathan Meisner, who's racing in the XC1 class, finally got his race bike. Uh, and this, he is new to uh, EMTB racing. He grew up racing cross country, enduro, so this is something very new to him. So we're um, shaking out the bugs on the race bike today with him. I think his dad's actually gonna come out on the ride. And I'm excited because, I don't know if you can see, let's, let's flip it around. We're testing out for the first time the 2020 Specialized Turbo Kinevo. So if you're not super familiar with Specialized and e-bikes, this is more of a downhill enduro style bike. Definitely not what we'll be racing next weekend. We got a race bike already prepped and ready to go, so we're not gonna take it out. But we are gonna take this out and have some fun with it. As you can see, we got dual crown forks, coil suspension, flat back, black looking clean. Obviously tricked out with the Kush course. So I'm very excited about that. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun today. Obviously today is, you know, fitness, but um, more just working on bike skill, having fun, and uh, taking you guys along for the ride. So we're gonna meet the guys in uh, about an hour and get the ride on. Blitz um, by Arma. I have used some form of nutrition supplement since I started working out in like high school. No BS, this is the first thing in a very long time that I can feel a difference while I'm working out as far as being able to um, sustain the level of push that I want without it making me feel jittery. Like sometimes you feel super jittery if you take some type of a uh, nutrition supplement, like a pre-workout or whatever. Stuff's awesome. Wow! <laughs> I'm gonna break it in today. Absolutely. We are excited. All right. Right before our final team ride, before the season kicks off, um, Nathan's bike arrived. So we're happy about that. Um, and now we're all gonna get a ride together as a team one final time before we load up and head to Georgia in uh, just under a week. Uh, we're doing it at uh, Baker's Ridge in Morgantown, West Virginia. A bunch of really good um, terrain for us to, to, to ride as a team and to, to push ourselves and just make sure everything is shaken down the way it needs to be on the bike. So we're excited about this ride. No issues like the last time and it was a, it was a successful day. What do you um, think of that thing? It's, it's a beast. Compared to the, uh, would you have Stumpy? Stumpy, yeah. 
So the thing that I love most about it is, um, number one, there's just power in spades. Like mm -hmm. I have only dipped into turbo for like maybe a couple of times. Right. Like once you figure out kind of how to weight the bike, yep. it hides its weight so well. Right now I have eco set in 35% support and 50% peak power. I have trail set up at 50% support, 80% peak power, and I have turbo at 100. Mm -hmm. And like with that, I have been in eco and trail, definitely more eco than trail. Like that was my thing is I always rode my dad in like turbo and just like Yeah, like, yeah and I don't feel the need to do that on this bike. First day on the 6D helmet um, was a non-issue. It was super comfortable. Um, you know, it never moved around like any of my other helmets that I've had in the past uh, that have uh, a different type of protection system. And um, yeah, really stoked on the feel of it and uh, yeah, the comfort of it. Uh, I just didn't notice it the whole ride, so I always think that's a good thing about a helmet. Uh, what about 60. the Kush course today? Kush course were on point. You have them in the Kineva too, right? Yeah, have them in both bikes. Yep. Does Adam have them in now? Yeah, he's got yeah, the Kush yeah, course in. Just got Adam set up with the Kush course. Nope. Are you riding home in that? With the muddy butt? Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's a race car. All right, we ready for race day? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We've got we've got our XC1 Pro. <laughs> How's the first day on the bike? Absolutely fantastic. 16 miles and we still got 50% battery left. That's what I'm talking about. No complaints. All right, well, it's uh, the day before we leave for round one. It's also all hell is breaking loose. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say. This is crazy. Today alone, NCAA tournament, men and women's have been completely canceled. Minor or Major League Baseball has been put on hold. Hockey's been put on hold. M uh, NBA, I believe, has been canceled. The Supercross races have been, this weekend's race in Indy has been put to no fans. Seattle, Washington has been canceled. So all of these events are getting canceled. And it's 5.30 on Thursday. We leave tomorrow morning early to drive to Georgia and this event has not been canceled. Now GNCC is a client, so I've been talking to um, you know, the powers that be there and as of right now, it's still on as long as Georgia doesn't put some type of a mandate in about large groups and events. So it's really, it's out of their control. We could be driving down there tomorrow and it get canceled. Just, we're at a weird point in history right now um, yeah, I don't even know what to say. I mean, this is, it's unfortunate from a business standpoint, very stressful, uh, obviously for my business, everybody's business. Yeah, it's just stressful, man. I mean, we've put a lot of work in to get ready for the season and we're making our debut tomorrow and Scott Sipkovic from Arma is going to be there and then, uh, or not tomorrow, this weekend, but Scott's going to be there from Arma. Just a lot of, I mean, it has the makings to be a really cool, great, successful weekend. It's 5.30 on a Thursday, it could be all taken away. So, as of this clip, we're still going racing. I mean, we got the seed ready, we got the specialized Levo ready to go. We took the spare battery out of the, uh, out of the Kinevo, so that I've got a backup to do a little bit of pre-riding before the race and still have a full battery. Man, this is crazy. Everybody's just freaking out and panicking. And, yeah. I don't even know what to say. So I just literally pulled my phone out five minutes after shooting that clip. And uh, we're still on as of right now. GNCC put out at this time the general GNCC is set for this weekend in Washington, Georgia. It will schedule, uh, proceed as scheduled unless notified. 
To the contrary, by local authorities, Georgia government, Kemp urges the sick and vulnerable to avoid large events and mass gatherings. Just picked up Colin. Did you bring hand sanitizer? We got matching shirts on today too. That's super cool. Oh yeah, it's cute. So here we are. Hey, what's going Princeton, on? Princeton, West Virginia. <laughs> we found out that the GNCC down in Georgia might get canceled, but they're not gonna announce it until three o'clock. It's just now about noon. So we're like, what do we do? Do we keep driving? Do we hang out in Princeton, West Virginia for a few hours? Which if you don't know, there's there, there's nothing to do, and then, and there's, then there's another level of there's absolutely nothing to do. Yeah. We're one, one below that. Especially if we don't want to like expose ourselves. We got the germ X. Got the germ X. Yeah, I don't know what we we're gonna. Got to use the restroom <laughs> for terrified. <laughs> it's like the apocalypse is coming, but we don't really realize it. Things change are changing really quickly, not just in cycling, but all sports. Um, I mean, earlier yesterday, you know the Indianapolis Supercross was going to be held without fans. And then now, you know, not even 24 hours later, it's completely canceled. So now, you know, Colin and I are on our way down. It's about a eight and a half, almost nine hour drive to where we have to go. And we're a few hours into it. And we, we find out from Adam that uh, the governor of Georgia is supposed to hold a press conference. And we waited in a parking lot in the middle of nowhere in West Virginia for five hours waiting for this press conference. And nothing and finally we're like okay as of right now all reports from GNCC say that this thing's still happening um, so we just kind of rolled the dice and, and, and headed on um, unfortunately after all the stuff that we went through with trying to get Nathan's bike here on time and him being excited to make his pro debut just with all the reports and the state of emergency that President Trump put out like there's all this stuff going on that um, you know, the decision was made that Nathan and his dad would turn around and go back because we honestly weren't sure if we were going to get locked out of the state. That's how uncertain we were. Colin and I kind of rolled the dice. Nathan and his dad made the decision, which we supported, um, to, to, to stay safe and stay at home to keep from potentially getting locked out. Um, so unfortunately, you know, Nathan isn't going to make the trip down, uh, which he's super bummed about. Uh, we're obviously bummed about, but he'll make that pro debut at the next round. So um, the race is happening, believe it or not. I have no idea how, but the race is going to go on as of right now. All right, well, we made it. We're at the Airbnb. So we waited. How long did we wait in the Walmart parking lot? Oh, we Five hours? At like 11.45. Yeah. And we left at like 4.30 something. They didn't cancel the race. I think it's the only professional sporting event in the country that didn't get canceled. So apparently we're racing tomorrow. So we'll see you guys in the morning. All right, well, we're out here. It's a beautiful day. Everybody, uh, I don't know, people aren't that on edge. It's kind of, it's like a little bubble, man. You know, it's like kind of relieving. And everybody's just kind of carrying on about their business out here. Hey, check it out. We got. We got Mr. Armo, we got Scott Zipkovic, came all the way out. They're in uh, Georgia. That's right, man. Excellent. Is this the first GNCC for you this year? First GNCC uh, ever. Ever? I didn't realize that. I think uh, before it was called GNCC, I did a hair scramble okay. in the day. And, uh, at high school. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, thanks for your support this year, man. We're excited to rep the brand and for to see what you guys got. Yeah, the product's pretty cool. We're all enjoying it. So. Most importantly, it's uh, it's enjoyable, but it gets the job done. It helps it does. push to the push to the finish. Achieve something you think you could. Yeah. And it's on the was it Informed Sports? Is that what it's called? Informed Sports certified. So uh, no band services. guy total celebrity all set ready for the that's general. right you ready to ride here's the pit set up pretty cool coop dog you excited yeah. you gonna win today that's right what do you think of the track yeah so far the track is uh it's awesome, you know, it's dry for the most part, <coughs> excuse me, um, the loamy in the woods. Uh, it's a beautiful 
beautiful course. It really is. Yeah. It'll be fast. Is it better than last year's or is it the same course? You no, know, I mean, it's a lot of the same woods. Um, I think they just kind of flowed it a little bit differently and then That's fun. maybe even just slowed it down a little bit so you didn't have these like big sections of like open. It's a lot more using the woods. Yeah, it was There's just enough traditional GNCC mud in there to make yeah, it to make yeah. it GNCC. Yeah, but it was also an excellent e mountain bike course. Yeah. So we're going through tech inspection. Um, I'll show you how this works. So we have these little transponders right here. When we do a lap, it tells scoring where we're at. So we're going to go through tech inspection and do a little test. Thanks, man. Good to go? Thank you, sir. So we're uh, pre-riding the course, just kind of doing siding laps, and we look for different lines that we can take. So we've got a line that comes straight through here and goes long, but then Colin found this inside line. It cuts off all that now the rule in gncc is you can do 20 feet from the main line so all of that is in uh it's fair game so the weather in georgia is awesome the track is awesome it's it's almost like we're in this little bubble uh to where the panic it hasn't really set in down here and everybody's just kind of going on as normal keeping a safe distance of course but it's nice to be at the race because there's mass chaos and panic going on everywhere but here we're kind of just focused on one thing and that's our team and doing well and putting in a good result and having fun. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we came and I think it's gonna end up being a really good day. So we just got done pre-riding. Um, Colin and uh, Cooper and Adam, we're all gonna get um, some food in us. Um, wanted to run you through a couple things that I use. So we've got, Arma's protein supplement. This is 100% grass-fed whey. This is the very vanilla flavor. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now, I'll put a scoop, scoop and a half of that in this bottle, get some protein in me, because we got about, about three and a half hours before the first race. So get some of that in me. Use this, this is Blitz. Um, it's a training complex, flavors berry blast. Um, it's got all kinds of stuff and I can't pronounce some of it. Scott would do a better job of this, but yeah. Arma, Scott's here this weekend, making sure we're fueled up. It's gonna be a good one. What's your plan for today? You gonna try and win? Yeah. How many people do you think you'll have in your class? A lot. A lot? I've seen a lot of kids over there come Yeah. Oh, uh, with number plates on? What's your plan to get the whole shot? Pretty much, and then lead the rest of the, the whole race. You got a backup plan in case you don't get the whole shot? Uh, Do you look for passing lines on those siding laps? Kind of. Too well for the first lap, and then the second lap just hard. Yeah. I like it. All right, it's um, we're about 30 minutes out from race number one. You ready? Ready. I'm ready. Title hunt. Hey, there's 63 riders registered nice. today. Nice. That's 35 more than last year. It's insane. So, we're getting ready. We've got the CSD. We've got the Arma. We've got the Kush course. We've got the riders. I'm just thankful we're having this race. So, we'll see you guys on the starting line. The race went off, um, awesome start. There were 63 riders. And I mean, you know, I'm the uh, first class to go on the team. Nathan would be the first class, but since he didn't make it, it goes pro and then amateur. I'm in the amateur class. So my class and then Adam Mayhew, uh, Adam is, I mean, he's contending for a national championship this year. We were pre-riding the course a little bit too late. We show up and we're like, oh, we're, we're ready to go racing. We got in the second row, right? Our class is so big, there's two rows, and we were so late um, that we got a spot in the second row. 
So Adam and I are lined up far left, second row. We take off and, and Adam just darts to the inside and I think he comes out second or third off the whole shot, which was my goal for him was to get that. My goal for this race is to finish and to, and to try to crack top 10. Adam's goal is to win this race. On your right. Yep. Nice man. On your left, my man. Thank you. Sorry about that, dude. Colin, as you can see on his footage, I mean, he was pretty much riding by himself most of the time, passing a lot of lap riders. Oh, right. Fortunately, unfortunately for him, I mean, he was in second place the whole the whole time. Barry uh, is no joke, and I mean, beyond getting around the lappers, Colin was riding by himself the entire time, but put in a really strong um, showing for second place. And then Cooper Kaneff, um, I mean, his goal was to win, but he's got a really tough uh, rider that he's got to contend with this year. So Coop got the whole shot and then quickly slid back to second. Uh, and they battled pretty much the, the entire race. Um, Adam uh, led the entire race up until the last lap and he had a really strong rider um, just on his heels the entire, the entire race and was kind of pacing him and the last lap, last minute, um, he beat Adam by I think a second, maybe less than a second. Second, I think. No, you did. I, I, I saw him come across, but here I think you're the next guy. Who's fast? He's, He's the guy. Fast, dude. I kind of, I kind of like my job all right too. I'll tell you that right now. Well, Emily, uh, out of Vermont, I'm sure you. Oh, okay. Well, that, uh, you got your. <laughs> Maybe they just typoed up there. But anyway, uh, from Utah, uh, good to have you out here. Uh, what do you think about Georgia and the, these electric mountain bikes? George is awesome, and you guys are awesome. This right here is uh, James Mayhew. James, uh, welcome to EMTV GNCC, man. Hey, it's great. It's an awesome track, uh, great time. Kudos to this guy. He rode my wheel the whole time and uh, beat me in the last lap. Was, oh, no, 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 no. That did not happen. Yeah, it, was, it was pretty rough. Uh, that's a hard one, to, hard one to swallow. I have to think, getting beat like that, you got to come back, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll be back for sure. I hope to, we, we have a few more of those throughout the year. It's going to be awesome. So tell me about your race. I um, had a real good race. I uh, was close to Barry on the first lap and I mean honestly he he laid down the wood and he just took off and I just kind of rode my own race and just tried to push as hard as I could everywhere I could and um, yeah, I just ended up second. I mean I'd really like to, to thank Luke Nestler of Luke Nestler Racing. His company Impact Media started a EMTV team this year. Uh, uh, it, it's just awesome the excitement that we have with them. Uh, 60 helmets is dropped on board as well as uh, armor nutrition. Um, I was using that today. I felt super hydrated, never had any cramping. I just felt good, you know, and, and to push through today as much as I could possibly push through. Always want to thank the guys at Walmsley Cycles for uh, helping out, supporting me, and, and letting me go to the races. And um, kind of similar to what Adam said, you know, man, I'm running those push scores and I can just bash through stuff, and don't worry about flat tires, and, and I'm good to go. What's up about you folks in Fairmont and over there in the Morgantown, Fairmont area? Why are you guys so fast on these electric bikes like this, man? Cooper! So tell me about your race today, Coop. Uh, I got the whole shot, and then I won the award over there, and the quad bus got me, and they got by me, and then I passed all of them, and then kept up with Mitch, and he just pulled away from me. Oh man, so you, you saw Mitch out there during the race? Yeah. Maybe some incentive did it? What? Did it make you want to try to catch him? Yeah. And is it going to make you want to come back and try to beat him next time? Yeah. Well, that's incentive right there. And that's, that's what we call incentive. So uh, you got that incentive to come back. So uh, congratulations, Coop, on a second place position finish here. I'm expecting to see you back out at more of these, okay? Yeah. And I expect you to try to beat uh, Mitch over here too, all right? All right, who do you want to say thanks to? Uh, my mom and dad, Luke Nestor, Impact Media, Wonsu Cycle, 60, Cush Court, and Arma. <laughs> Anybody forgot? Cooper Knopf, ladies and gentlemen, taking second. All right, dude, how'd it go? You got second. Track was awesome. Track was awesome. 
the race was great. Uh, you know, it's pretty painful to lead the entire race and lose it on the last lap uh, by a second. I think someone pointed out that it was like 1.7 seconds. Um, but all in all, pretty happy. Bike was awesome, track was awesome. All, this, all the gear was great. Uh, I took a nasty digger. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that, early, man. Uh, Pre-riding, uh, 60 helmets, literally, I smashed my head against the tree. Uh, obviously, push for us, that sweet. Uh, there were some sharp up. edges yeah, out there, for yeah, sure. For sure. Uh, I, I wonder how many people uh, had mechanicals or issues. Uh, but I don't know, uh, good race. Yeah, man. Awesome time. Sweet. How'd it go? It went great. You know, I had a really good battle at the beginning of the race with uh, Barry Ray. Um, and, man, to be honest with you, I just kind of settled in and had to ride my own race to make sure I got through it. My goal is to not get lapped by the pros, to stay on the lead lap, and that worked out. But, uh, yeah, Barry was just, uh, he, was, he was better than me today. And, um, yeah, it worked out good. Had no issues with any of my equipment. Man, to be honest with you, man, I was... <clears throat> really stoked on how I felt for the race um, from just <clears throat> the prep work that I did with my my Arma um, it felt good it didn't really affect my my belly at all as far as in a negative way and I felt hydrated and, and really could push through and uh, yeah stoked man really cool yeah I came up short on my goal. Obviously, I wanted to get a top 10, but I know I'm not really where I need to be fitness-wise yet. I'm getting there. Uh, I got 12th, uh, so goal for right now is top 10. Goal by the end of the year is top three. Um, and I was holding pace with the guy that I needed to be battling with for that 10th place spot crashed and didn't have what it took to get back up to him. Everybody knows what they need to do to, to improve, right? Cooper knows what he needs to work on. Adam uh, and Colin all, they got second place. Each one of them got second. I think they know what they need to do to improve. Um, I obviously know what I need to do to get better. And then uh, we still have to see where Nathan is gonna slot in. I mean, the pro class is no joke. Um, the guy that's at the top of the sport right now, Charlie Mullins is, in my opinion, he's unbeatable. Um, so it's just a matter of where can Nathan slot in between second to fifth. I think it could be that top five contender. So we'll have to see. But all in all, race number one, um, you know, I'm just thankful we got it in. It's, it's, we're not sure when we're going racing again. Hopefully it stays on schedule, but you know, everything is so up in the air right now. So right we're, now we're back to training and uh, just continuing to hammer it so that if we do go off in uh, Somerset, PA, uh, at the beginning of, uh, of May, we're, we're going to be ready.